Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito This Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Kirk Your Enthusiasm. Today, you are joined by myself and two of my very old, longtime internet friends, both of them Wolves fans, both of them at one point or another making Wolves content, but right now it's summer and we're all just sort of hanging out and I wanted to hear about their off season and what they think. First, we have my friend David and then we have Maggie. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. I'm spectacular. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for we were, having us. We, we were laughing about how we were not going to talk over each other. And then each of you left three solid seconds of silence before. <laughs> let's just, talking. like, let, let's just note that, like, as, as Kirk acknowledged, we are Minnesotan people and we may be polite to a fault to each other, which aids that in some ways. And then we ruin it later. So to close <laughs> yeah, off the just podcast. Some Minnesota nice bullshit. Yeah, well, that's when, often, or I own ice in my in my both, whatever. So when when you guys are tired of this podcast, David's just gonna slap his hands on his knees and get up and say, "Well, time to get going," and that's oh. how I know to end the podcast. Um, well, let me let me slide into the conversation there, old Kirk. <laughs> sure. Well, so so it's been probably. <laughs> To, in my estimation, as a non Wolves fan, it's been probably the most exciting, like moment to moment free agency and summer period, probably in a long time for the Timberwolves and their fan base. Where would you sort of like to start? Because I, I feel which came out first the the movie with Bo Cruz, where Anthony Edwards got to be the best, like, that basketball. Was first. That was first. I mean, that should have been that should have been like a sign. Because uh, what the hell was the name of that movie? Timberwolf Legend of Wancho Hearn and Gomez also in that movie. Let's know. But Hustle. That's what it was. It was Hustle yep. with Adam Sandler, Juan Hern, uh, Hernan Gomez, and then Anthony Edwards comes out of the woodwork to be just one of the defining sports villains, like up there with like Mr. T and Drago from from like Rocky. Just outstanding content. That was a real fun thing that and that's to me now that i look back that should have been a bit of a a beacon that the the things were about to come up hot wolves summer so so what else has gone on this this off season i mean we all know but okay, i want to hear you first, guys explain. obviously we need to talk about anthony edwards and his acting chops or just sure. who he is in general like like you referred to him as a villain and i don't think he could ever be a villain just because of who he is and his personality and he's fucking adorable <laughs> But, like, who he was in that character, like, yes. that's just how sassy he is at all times. And I, I fucking love him so much. Like, like, the the dude just has every single bit of charisma you could ever want in a human being, let alone basketball player, actor, whatever you want to call him. He's just, like, the most charismatic dude. 
it's it, there are reasons why it's like he's an amazing basketball player, but his interviews are appointment content. Watch every Anthony Edwards interview. Doesn't he have a Twitter feed for his dog? Yes. Yep. Ooh. And he tweets himself as, as his dog. Hounds does too. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm assuming someone runs the the account for him, but. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Towns has one for his dog too. I think I remember that. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, so we, we we start off there, and that was and so for I I did a I think I did a podcast on this because there's like five different Mavericks in that. Like it's one of the most fun like basketball movies that I can remember in a long time. So if you haven't checked it out, go take 90 minutes or two hours, however it is, and go watch <laughs> this movie. It was just so joyful, and the thing like like you know basketball part aside they managed to make adam sandler and queen latifah as an actual like they managed to make that pairing as a couple work and it had no business working just a real that's one of the things that i i, I don't know it was, it was a fun movie um so let me go into how is adam sandler just like that's his thing now he's like i'm a sports movie guy and i know happy gilmore exists whatever but like serious sports movie guy and he's like i can just get away with this because i'm rich and this is what i do it's my passion and love I, it maybe I'm just, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well between that and uncut gems he's putting out heat lately like that's true that's true. Okay, let's so, talk real basketball. <laughs> so, so then we, so, so then, and I can't remember if this was first. I don't really care. But the dress play a part in this. So at the time, the Minnesota Timberwolves, with the twenty second pick, selected Walker Kessler. Who, if you don't know what Walker Kessler looks like, he looks like his name. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it other than that. <laughs> and then who else did the did the Wolves draft and and this this past like the 2022 draft they they was traded it? back somebody and i've already forgotten josh josh minot minot how do we yeah, say his name they to who if if you don't pay attention to draft twitter um the athletics john hollinger did a mock like a running mock draft that night John Hollinger is the biggest Josh Minot stand on this planet. Mm. If you go back and read his article from draft night, he had, here's the actual pick. Here's the analysis. Here's who I would have picked from pick 12 on until Minot was picked at 45. John Hollinger said he would pick pick Minot over every single other player. That's amazing. (laughs) I don't remember this at all. I'm going to have to go. It was hilarious. It was a running bit. That's um, and and then so that was with pick forty five I think because they draft they is this right yeah so they um they traded back I think maybe for pick forty five and then with pick fifty they selected a Italian guy named Matteo Spagnolo which is a phenomenal name really uh, just a strong and he he looks kind of weird probably a guy that'll never make it over here what do you think <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no I mean, I mean it's just maybe, like maybe three years who the fuck knows. Right, right. Like the Mavericks still hold the draft pick. The, to this, the other like, one that mattered was guard. the tra- the other one that mattered, which Kirk forgot, is the trade that the Mavericks and the Timberwolves made for pick number twenty six. Is that where the Mavs pick ended up? Wendell I know more junior. I just sort of like stopped paying attention when I knew the Mavericks were sending the pick away. I was like, okay, well, it's going somewhere, and it's not here. And then it was part of like four that different. Was the Wolves. Okay, so that was that's very interesting. So then we're we're kind of through with the draft and free, did the trade ha- so so what David try to tell me like I I mainly haven't paid attention because I think the more I read about the Wolves trade the angrier I get at the Wolves front office for sending 37 picks and all this stuff just because it totally blanked the market for a while. What had mm-hmm. like who went for who? Walk us through it. There were rumors from like before the draft, like this was not a surprise, surprise thing. If you read the tea leaves, followed John Krasinski of the athletic, followed the wolves heads, not necessarily that the wolves were going for Gobert specifically, but that they were shopping around for a traditional center, a five, a real five there. I, I know the first one that had big talk around it was Clint Capella. Um, that they had like investigated who obviously like Capella is a five. He's a five. So the the reporting 
made it pretty obvious that the front office is like, we think Cat is a four, and we want to make a move to put Cat at the four and make that happen as a thing. And obviously, like, of the options that are available for that mold of a guy, Gobert is, like, as good as you can possibly get, right? Sure. And it's it, it's in this time where, like, the Jazz are – they might blow up, they might not. Things are clearly not kosher in Utah after their playoff exit, but it is what it is. So then when, after the draft, like, it's like, well, the window's probably passed. I'm not that, we're not that worried about it. And then to me, it kind of felt like the Gobert trade and the execution of it really came out of nowhere. I think in some of the reporting that's been done about it, it's they talked about it a lot and then let it go for a while. And then the Wolves came back in and said, this is the offer. We're going to do this now. And they're like, okay. I mean, it. What were what were all the pieces included? Do we? Do I just need to? I should have probably had this pulled up. Um, it's it's probably sixty eight picks. I mean, it, it's it's got to be the biggest NBA like trade that it, in in the past three years. I feel like in terms of assets so the complete moved. details of the trade is just go bear to the Wolves. Sure, for Malik Beasley. Patrick Beverly, Jared Vanderbilt, Leandro Bomaro, the draft where rights to Kessler, so functionally a first round pick, never played. Yeah. And the Wolves unprotected 2023, 2025, 2027 picks, the Wolves 2029 pick with protection, and the a first round pick swap in 2026. So just one pick swap. Okay. So five so that's where we get four actual picks. One just converted pick, which Walker Kessler, you know, people that get picked like 15. I can tell you having been on yeah. Wolf's Twitter that night, nobody was excited about that. Pick. Yeah, like he's fine. Not a soul he, in Wolf's Twitter. Was like I, w- I was kind of terrified that the Mavericks were going to take him because him and Luka Doncic together would have like the two most punchable face like combo. Like it'd be like a bad wrestling um, tag team just because like Walker Kessler is like kind of handsome. Like he's got the SEC haircut. It, I don't know. It just, it would have been a, it, it would have been kind of, he's a traditional five, but almost in like the mid 2000 sense um, of like some of the guys that like played next to like Tim Duncan and KG, like way back in the day, but he's not, he's gonna be fine. He'll probably be like a functional serviceable big man for like eight years. It's whatever. So then you get all these picks. And you get Gobert, who is – is he like 31, 30? He's not that old. He's 30. kind of at – yeah. And and the the thought being um, pair him with Cat, make – I guess sort of attempt sort of a, a Western Conference version of something that the, the Cleveland Cavaliers hit on. That's where you comparison. Yeah, where you just throw – skilled size this is the big thing Mavs fans and I want you to think about this because the the reason I'm, I'm interested to talk to you too about this is because Mavericks fans are like oh we have JaVale McGee and um, Christian Wood and I'm like that is not the same <laughs> I don't know <laughs> like you know it's 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 just a different deal but it's not to say that JaVale McGee or Christian Wood are bad, but it's, we're talking two superstars and in Cleveland, it's two like, you know, Evan Mobley is incandescent like that dude. And so it's just, it, it's guys that can do a little bit of everything while also being huge. Um, and Gobert, you know, I, I, I'm going to be interested to see how he fits there because he's kind of an, like he kind of wants touches on offense and he is terrible at offense. His, he has like stone stone hands, but, he's he's so big and he's like always in the right spot so it's like how do we think it's gonna work with these two on offense on defense it's kind of self-explanatory to me so the very very short answer is think about the 2018 2019 brooklyn nets the player who this most impacts positively on offense is d'angelo russell because what, I'm most what, excited Nets, about. <laughs> what that Nets team was built around was D'Angelo Russell and Jared Allen playing pick and roll. Okay. And Jared Allen catching lobs over and over. D'Lo and Cat have chemistry and have figured some stuff out, but Cat is not a traditional five. He never has been and he never will be. Huh. Rudy goes is a traditional five. And the what Gobert is good at on offense is what D'Lo is good at feeding them. 
so in terms of pieces that didn't nest as well as they could have on last year's Timberwolves, this could be a significant upgrade to D'Lo as much as anybody else on the Wolves. That's fascinating. Uh, Maggie, talk to me about the D'Lo part of this, because you that was as excited that I've heard you about anything that wasn't Anthony Edwards related in a long time. Okay, so I'm a very big supporter of D'Lo, um, but it's very much the, I understand that you have to take his his lows to appreciate his highs. Like, he's obviously very a, a player that has so many ups and downs. Sure. But I, I, I love him so much, and I just want everyone else to be there, too. Um, but him working with Gobert on the pick and roll, like, I, I think that's my favorite part of the trade. Like, personally with Gobert, I was like, eh, I'm not excited about this. But if, like, that's going to be something that totally shines and works well for us, aside from Cat just being, you know, playing on the outside a little bit more, like giddy up, let's go. Sure. Well, it, it, one of the things that was very evident, I watched, I think the Mavericks played the Utah Jazz. They went to six games and then they played them three times from Christmas on. So I watched the Mavs play the Jazz nine times in about five months. And Donovan Mitchell sucks at passing um he also might suck but that's a different deal he just won't pass <laughs> to go bear um and and that it's like you know when you're seven foot two however tall go bear is your hands are up near the rim at a certain point it's just like placing the ball where the big man can catch it and dunk it and that dude would roll and dive and none of the jazz team would hit him so it's one of these things where it wouldn't to me it's not in, it's in the realm of possibility where we look up and Rudy Gobert is scoring like 14 points a game on seven shots and like shooting like 85% from the floor <laughs> just because of stuff like this. So, okay, I, I can see that. I can see that fit. Are there any, um, in order to get a Gobert, you know, you had to send away some players who are pretty, pretty functional. Malik Beasley is a incandescent shooter when he gets hot. And then Vanderbilt seems to be like, one of the like ultimate connective pieces, like he just makes a lot of stuff work. Are there any concerns so. about, are there any concerns about being kind of top heavy or what? So Vando's problem, and this was exposed both late in the season and in the Memphis series is that he is such a black hole on offense. Oh. He just couldn't do anything. He's a phenomenal defender and he fit really well in what the team wanted to do schematically, but it like he just couldn't get anything going on offense and it was made pretty obvious at points in the series. So like that is an upgrade in terms of you are replacing him functionally in what the wolves are trying to do with cat, which mm -hmm. is a little bit of a different puzzle piece, obviously. And then you replace cat with Gobert. Um, honestly, and I, I don't know if Maggie will agree with my take on this. The piece that's going to hurt them the most is Pat Bev who obviously is in the news is being traded to the Lakers this week. And I've seen you tweeting thirst tweets about Patrick Beverly on your timeline. Don't lie to the people. Me? Um, hey. Yes. You, I saw your tweets. <laughs> about Pat Bev is the third point guard on the maps. Don't oh yeah. Cause, cause currently okay, I'm like, third no. tweets for me. Um, <laughs> currently I'm the third string point guard. Yeah. Like that's um, the problem. Pat Bev was the heart and soul of that Wolves team at their best points last year put up the memes about the win in the play-in game, put up whatever you want. He was the heart and soul of this team, and he made them better in so many different ways. And I think that some of the things that worked because of him will stick. I just, he was so much of the emotional heart of this team last year that I'm very interested to see how they look in terms of that intangible level without him. Sure. So it's very interesting. Like so many fans, like what well, that was my biggest thing with Pat Bev being gone is who he is in the locker room and who they like, who he is for the team. So many people like their rebuttal was, well, Ant can be that person. It's like, well, of course he can. But at that moment in time, like he was still a 20 year old man. And it's like, you can't put all of that on him. 
I mean, I, I feel like he is a strong enough person that like he will easily accept that role. But again, like he turned 21, what, like August 4th yep. or whatever the fuck. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, like that's too much to put on him, even though I know he can and will be that player. But Well, that kind of leads me into the next question then. So what is the reasonable, let's just assume pretty good health, nothing catastrophic, everybody, you know, you're going to have guys that miss games here and there. You're going to get, you know, maybe Rudy Gobert sprains an ankle and misses 12 games, maybe cat, you know, jams a finger, the normal stuff. What do we think is a reasonable range of outcomes for the Wolves? And I ask because when you look at the West, usually outside of like the top one to two, there's kind of like this this morass of teams. And I think, and before I, I let you answer, the Clippers and the Wolves, to me, sort of force their way to the top of the food chain at least in terms of regular season basketball with the Warriors and maybe with the Suns and maybe the Suns are, or maybe the Mavericks just broke the Suns. But I think that, that for me, that the Wolves are capable of being kind of a top three to four regular season team in the West. It's there's just, they're gonna be a bitch to match up against every night. I will present the argument for that. And it's pretty easy to make. Look at every Jazz roster that Rudy Gobert has ever played on, and then go look at the 2020-2023 Minnesota Timberwolves roster. This is the best team that Rudy Gobert has ever been on, and that Jazz team won 50 games every year and was a top four seed every year. I think it is I mean, very I mean, easy to make. Obviously, if we're if we're not making the playoffs, then what the fuck are we doing here? But um, I also keep forgetting that Kyle Anderson and Austin Rivers are now on the team. It's nice. Depth. I will probably, I will probably forget until at least the third game of the season. <laughs> but it's a nice depth, I think. Both those guys, like Rivers, seems to have really settled into like a you know reasonable backup guard role. He's kind of a like an like a mildly angry guy, which I think every team could use. That's fun. I don't think I knew that either, Maggie. Uh, Slomo Slomo also killed them in the Memphis series. I'm so glad they stole him. I'm gonna love getting to cheer for Slomo. He's so fun to watch. <laughs> it's such a fucking silly nickname. Like, <laughs> watch him play basketball. There's a reason it's his. I know. I get it. That's right. I love it. And well. and like, I would be remiss as a Wolves person to not bring up probably the most important part of the Rudy Gobert trade that wasn't uh the wolves kept Jaden mcdaniels who is really 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 good at basketball and is also really young and just like Jaden is a dude that like he his ceiling is the thing that takes this wolves team from like clearly a playoff team clearly top six to like Western Conference Finals com- competitor because, like, he had some serious coming out party moments in the playoffs and in the end of the regular season last year for the Wolves, and is also like not even twenty two years old yet, and is growing and is getting to be a better shooter and is a monstrous defender, and he's the piece that people outside of Minnesota might not realize is like, oh, he was a starter on this team and should have been and is 21 years old and is getting better and is everything you want in a modern NBA player. He is the key to all of this. His and Ant's development so that take this from being a really nice, definite playoff team to being like, oh, we have something really, really good here. That's interesting because I think that the casual fan would put – Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert as kind of like the franchise face, but then more in the like obviously aware NBA fans tend to know that Anthony Edwards is the the guy. And McDaniel is interesting because I know I feel like he's only matched up against the Mavericks maybe twice. And I know he's one he's he's kind of the archetype of a guy that could actually bother Luca because it's both athletic, rangy, yep. and and able to like deal with Luca's bullshit. Um, 
and and that's that's pretty that's pretty interesting because yeah so Ant will obviously like be the face of the franchise it it feels like <clears throat> even with how cat interacts and i've said this a lot that like cat isn't meant to be the number one dude yeah there's um, nothing wrong with that yeah no like and i like I, I know he's a very good player. He's very st- a strong player, but I, I think when it, it comes to being a complete leader and being a boisterous player, mm-hmm. like that, that's not him. Um, and, and that's fine. Yeah. I, I think having Ant like lead that part of the charge is going to be great. Um, yeah. But when you mentioned having Gobert be the face of a franchise, I was like, oh, God, that fucking Well, it, you, just but... in terms of, like, name recognition, you <laughs> know what I mean? Those are just me and my personal feelings. It's fine. <laughs> it's like a it's like a cat, because, like, I think that the, and, and do you know, do you guys know how many, like, national TV games the Wolves got off the top of your head? Were you pleased or unhappy? Not Six or seven. A lot. See, and that More strikes me. Years. More than they have in years. Yeah, but that strikes me as a. So it's like we don't talk about this enough when the national TV schedule gets released. But once football season is over, the NBA starts flexing a lot of their their set their weekend games, and then they're like Friday night games too. So it wouldn't shock me if like the Wolves end up being one of the teams where in like March and April, yeah, if because because that's well, but- the thing. Go ahead. The, the national TV perspective is like the na- national TV doesn't talk about the Northwest Division. None yeah, of us. None of those true. five teams. They don't matter on the national perspective. Even when the all Blazers were good, all the time. The national TV. Well, see, I'd be like, okay it was with the like... Blazers sometimes, the Thunder sometimes, and now it's like they have how many how many national TV games does Denver have? They have a back to back reigning MVP. Yeah. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's interesting too because Ant. We've talked about this a little, but it's always worth revisiting. Ant is the kind of player that attracts eyeballs, both with his style of play and with the fact that he gives re- like he's he's almost like a '90s wrestling promo guy. Like the things that he says are outstanding. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just outstanding. It's like a you, you talked about like like he has that like natural charisma that you can't really identify like like what it is other than the fact that you look at him, you hear him, and you're like, this dude is cool and there just aren't so many like players like try to do it but it doesn't it just doesn't it's 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 not a thing you can make happen you know it's it's just the the way the guys are i i'm i'm really interested in this timberwolves team i'm really not looking forward to playing this timberwolves team which is not something you want me to get you an anthony edwards t-shirt i mean i would like i I love all (laughs) basketball so i i would i would wear it um I'm trying to think because you guys have kind of hit on a lot of the high points and I, as usual, I've kept everybody longer than I intended to. Um, <laughs> any, any other points that, that, as you mentioned, you know, you, wolves and Northwest division don't get talked about. Is there anything else that's like interesting that we, you think we ought to know that Mavs fans ought to know. So schedule schedule thing that their division is the nuggets and probably three of the five teams that aren't making the playoffs in the West. Okay, it's interesting. I like it. Like the the jet, particularly if Don the so the Donovan Mitchell circus is happening right now with New York and whoever. If Mitchell leaves the Jazz, they have nobody. Chet is out for the year for OKC. The Jazz and the Thunder are going to be like the two worst teams in the league. Mm. So there's That's eight true. games of that. I don't trust Portland at all. No, no. I, I'm I'm texting. <laughs> do, do you guys know Danny Morang? Um, yep. Portland Trail. Like, I'm texting with him. St. Louis Cardinals like, fan, Danny Morang. Yes, so all of you guys. There's so many like My guy. so many basketball <laughs> people or Cardinals fans confuses me. I am um, not. I know, like, well documented. You, you are the most Minnesota of Minnesota fans that I know. So it's <laughs> It's true. And, and he's mad at me because I'm just like, I don't believe in your team. I don't believe in the Trailblazers at all. Like I I quietly think that that Dame, I don't think he's a fraud or anything, but I just think that like elements of he's hit some huge shots and cool playoff series. And that sort of like has allowed the fact it's like, they've not been very good. Like, are, you, it's, are, it's, you, are you talking about like the whole superstar bullshit conversation? No, no, just like that. Okay. That I think he's, I think that, that they get away with reputational stuff where it's like, Oh, well the wolves could be good because Dame would Dame hit a shot over Chandler Parsons five years ago. I'm like, that's, that's, you know, it's like, the kind of like had some really cool shit, but like there's no really way in stuff. dirty hell that he is a household name. 
No. So, right. so like that's in terms of like the record conversation, there's a real good chance that both Denver and Minnesota are like 14 and two in division this year. Yeah. And that does some stuff to your standings. Sure. Because like those are the teams that you play the most. And like, yeah, they're going to play against the rest of the West too. And that's going to be the murderer's row that it always is. But like the getting to play eight games against what the Jazz probably will be and what the Thunder are is a opportunity to inflate your standings. Where like compare that to like the Mavs division, y'all get Houston who sucks and the Spurs who are whatever they're trying to be. No, but then the top of the, the top of the uh, Southwest division is that, that, finger gun scene in the office where yeah. you know one of us is it's meant it's a, a new orleans a memphis and dallas just you know screaming at each other so it's it's definitely going to be a tough one well i am now 20 minutes past the time i told my wife i would be back downstairs <laughs> so i should probably go you guys are great tell Thank her you so much. <laughs> tell her i'm sorry that yeah. oh, my sh- ipad just didn't want to play with all its other ipad friends i don't fucking know well, team, we'll talk soon because I want to do more touch in, uh, touch base in the regular season with my other basketball friends. Maggie and I did one that was just kind of a meandering, like half hour ant show in the middle of last season. That was fun, and I would know, like to revisit that. Yeah, no, that's I what I mean. Talking about it's, Anthony Edwards, it's it's great, and I, I don't really know if my fan base likes hearing these things, but I like talk. <laughs> I like talking. Everyone to Everyone will love him. I'm going to make them. Oh, yeah. No, Amer- America should love Anthony Edwards. So, sure. guys, this has been Kirk Anderson, David, and Maggie. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Uh, I will be back next week with um, Blazers 1. I might do a green room, Spotify Live, whatever it's called at some point. I'm still getting my bearings straight. Training camp doesn't start until September 27th, I don't think. So, it's like we just got another month to kill. So, we're going to have to figure out what to do with ourselves. Uh, thanks so much for spending time with us. This has been Kirk, your enthusiasm. Have a good week. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, Just go to cars.com. It's magical.